Do what? This is a neat thing. <laughs> okay. So ionization energy was the first periodic trend that we talked about yesterday. Um, it has to do with forming ions. Today, we're going to talk about atomic and ionic size and their trends. So atomic size or ionic size is literally the distance from the nucleus to the valence electrons. It's a measurement. It's how far is it from the nucleus to the outermost electrons. And atomic size depends on two factors. And I'm going to write them in order of importance. So the first factor, the most important factor in determining ionic size is the number of energy levels. And just like layers in an onion, the more energy levels there are, the bigger the atom is. That's always true. So if you're comparing two atoms and one of them has more energy levels than the other, the one with more energy levels is always bigger. That's always true. So more energy levels, bigger atom. Always. But then we come to the issue of what if you're trying to compare two atoms that have the same number of energy levels? So two atoms that are in the same period on the periodic table. That's when you have to look at the size of the nucleus, the nuclear size. Nuclear size is going to help us determine which is bigger for two atoms that have the same number of energy levels because a big nucleus is going to pull harder on those valence electrons, pull them in closer, and it's going to be a smaller atom. Atoms with a bigger nucleus are usually smaller because they're pulling their electrons closer. So larger or more positive nucleus makes a smaller atom. But that's only true if they have the same number of energy levels. And that has to do with Coulomb's law. A bigger nucleus is pulling harder on its electrons with more force, and they're going to be pulled in closer and make a smaller atom. But energy levels is the first determining factor. Then if that's the same, you have to look at the nuclear size. Okay, so our periodic trends for atomic size as we move from left to right, these are atoms in the same period with the same number of energy levels. So as we go left to right, we're adding protons, atomic numbers going up. So our atoms are getting smaller. Same number of energy levels, nucleus is getting bigger, so atoms have to be getting smaller. Left to right, smaller, due to bigger nuclei. So if we're comparing lithium and neon, lithium 
is plus 3 with two energy levels. Neon is plus 10 with two energy levels. This big positive 10 nucleus pulls harder on those outer electrons, and this one is slightly smaller. It's not an obvious difference. It's not huge, but this one's going to be smaller than this one. Lithium and neon. Bigger nucleus pulls harder on the electrons. From top to bottom, the atoms get bigger. Because as we go down a group, all we're doing is every group, every element adds another energy level in a group. this one makes a lot of sense because if we're comparing hydrogen at the top of group one to sodium, which is just two rows down, sodium has to be bigger. It has two more energy levels. Questions about atomic size? Okay. Let's talk about ionic size. There are two types of ions, cations and anions. And we're going to compare a cation to its parent atom, basically. So, example would be sodium or sodium plus. Anions are always smaller than their parent atoms because they've lost electrons. And most of the time, losing those electrons, they've completely lost an energy level. So, cations are smaller due to electron loss. This went from having nucleus, three energy levels, like this, to nucleus, two energy levels. it completely lost this valence electron and therefore completely lost that third energy level. It has to be smaller. It lost an energy level. <coughs> Anions Anions have gained one or more electrons, and so they're larger. But 
But the trick is they don't gain energy levels. They gain electrons in their valence energy level. And all that happens is gaining those electrons creates more electron repulsion, like what we talked about yesterday. And more electron repulsion is going to make the atom a little bigger. This is not as significant as a chain of a change as this is, but these are still bigger. Anions are bigger than their parent atoms. So fluorine itself is a nucleus with two energy levels and seven valence electrons. Fluoride is the nucleus with two energy levels but eight valence electrons. More electrons in that outer energy level creates more electron repulsion, and more electron repulsion makes the atom a little bit bigger. It's not as obvious, it's not as big of a change, but anions are bigger. Questions about cations and anions. Okay, the other two things I want to talk about are closely related. They're not the same. Electron affinity. and electronegativity. So, electron affinity is the energy released When a neutral atom gains an electron or becomes an anion. So any element, that's not a real element, that gains an electron to become an anion, energy is released. This is an exothermic process. And all you need to know is from top to bottom, this decreases. The amount of energy released decreases from top to bottom. So when hydrogen gains an electron, there's more energy released than when potassium gains an electron. Neither one of them would, but, well, hydrogen might. We could do a fluorine. When fluorine gains an electron, there's more energy released than when bromine gains an electron. This electron affinity is not used very often. It's not even talked about very often. You just need to know what it is. What you do need to know is electronegativity. And this is the ability of an atom to attract electrons in a covalent bond. We completely exclude noble gases from the discussion of electronegativity because they just don't. They don't have a need because they have a full valence shell. They have a full octet. But other than that, this all has to do with the nuclear size to nuclear, or nuclear charge to size ratio. Small atoms with a big nucleus compared to their size are very good at attracting electrons. 
So if we talk about fluorine, and it's the most electronegative, it has a plus nine nucleus and only two energy levels. So if there's another element close by, this small size compared to this big nucleus will be very good at attracting electrons because the nucleus doesn't have a lot of shielding. There aren't a lot of electrons blocking the nucleus. Small atom, big nucleus makes fluorine the most electronegative. Compared to something big like francium, or even potassium, it doesn't have a big nucleus compared to its size. It does have a big nucleus, but it also is a huge atom. So fluorine is the most electronegative, and it's just this perfect combination of nuclear charge to size. And then francium is the least, because it's a huge atom and its nuclear charge isn't very big compared to its size. And it just decreases away from fluorine. So oxygen and chlorine, also very electronegative. They're next to fluorine. And it just kind of goes towards the bottom left, getting less and less electronegative. Questions? <coughs> 